It's a beautiful day. We're in Hong Kong and I'm recording 852 Reboot Hong Kong on the harbor again. I'm playing with the Ferris wheel and we're just outside the Tamar government headquarters. We're going to talk with Jane Chan, who is head of Start Me Up for Invest Hong Kong. I was born here, but I was raised actually in Scotland and I came back, um, God, way too many years. I don't even want to say how long that's been, but it's over 20 years since I've been back. And why? Why did you come back? What brought you back? Well, you know, if you talk to people here after a while, you'll hear the same story on a regular basis, which is, you know, after university, you think you come back. And, and in my case, it was my dad saying, you know, you're too westernized. You need to get back to your roots a little bit. So go to Hong Kong and, and basically but come back. Um, so I came to Hong Kong. My sister was working here at the time and um, had such a great time. It was just it was in the early 90s and, and there were so many opportunities. It was such a buzzing thriving city and there were like um, you know so many people around and so much optimism actually around as well so you know I ended up getting a job here and staying and 20 odd years later here I am still very nice and what what is it you're doing because you work in a specific department of Invest Hong Kong? I do. So I, I work for a, a division um, called the Start Me Up HK. And what this is, is an initiative within Invest Hong Kong, which is the government department helping overseas companies set up in Hong Kong, that is focused on supporting startups, investors, corporate innovation labs, academia, all these people who are involved in, in developing a startup ecosystem. So I help and support overseas companies in those areas to set up here. And then two other functions that I also do, uh, our team is responsible for is to promote Hong Kong as a tech hub on an international level. So I travel quite a bit to different places and um, you know we, we attend events, we um, set up meetings, we also um, speak and, and create our own meetups as well so a lot of different things where we want to try and highlight different kind of opportunities there are for startups here in the city and then finally the third thing that we're responsible for is actually helping to build the Hong Kong startup ecosystem I mean it sounds like it's a little bit related but it's, it's, it's quite a separate task in terms of different kind of activities so when we're talking about building the startup ecosystem we're talking about working with the universities to actually make sure that the ta talent they're developing is relevant for you know for joining startups startups or that they are being taught in ways that they can basically leave university and go straight into a job and start making an impact right away. So we work with universities on that. We work with um, family offices as well as investors to try and get them to look at more investment in early stage tech. Um, you know, we, we, we build this massive event as well to try and connect different players from around the world to Hong Kong. So lots of different activities there. So it's a very varied role. Great job, I'm jealous. <laughs> it's great, it's good fun. So I'm very curious though, because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit kind of stuck in, in, the, in the mindset of Hong Kong being full of energy and a great place. Mm. When you go to other parts of the world, because there's innovation happening all over the world, yes, right? And yes. How, how is Hong Kong perceived and, and how, do you, how do you feel you need to change that perception at all? Um, I mean, on the whole, I think people know Hong Kong just because Hong Kong is one of the world's financial centres. It's like the third one after London and New York. So people already in the financial services industry know Hong Kong, respect Hong Kong a lot. So correspondingly, the fintech development in Hong Kong has really grown um, leaps and bounds in the past few years and it's actually very well respected. So when I go overseas and I talk to fintech, then they're automatically thinking, oh, wow, it's fantastic. It's, it's one of those places that we definitely want to expand to once we hit that kind of route. So it's usually within the fintech space, very well known and people aspire actually to come here. Um, and the other areas such as health tech or smart city, where we're probably not so well known, but there's actually a, a huge amount that's been done at the universities here, as well as some of the research parts, the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park, for example, and ASTRI and other kind of research institutions doing some fantastic things. So in cases like that, we do have to try and bring some of those opportunities or the latest developments to a bigger audience just so, so they know what's going on here. Um, so just generally, I, I think the perception of Hong Kong is that, you know, it's a great city and people are beginning to know it as, as a, a little bit more of a tech hub. In fact, we have been covered by the startup genome. Um, it was, they placed it for the first time um, Hong Kong into the top one of the top 23 kind of tech hubs in the world. So ranked as well. Ranked, yeah. So it's, um, it's a great result. 
I'm curious about the because the, obviously fintech I can see the connection with yeah. the stock market. Mm. How do you then get people thinking about the other the other businesses here? Because obviously we're a big trading port. Yes. You know we're known for originally for textiles yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Do you see you know, is there a natural fit in any other area that you see people overseas perceiving us? Yeah. Well, I think the overseas perception is very much Hong Kong is a financial center yeah. or it's a property. Um, you know. You know, really focused area, but actually Hong Kong, if you really look, um, you know, under the covers a little bit, it's actually a very diverse economy. As you mentioned, like the trade, import, and export, yeah. that's been our bread and butter for decades, um, way before the finance came along, and way before the property became such a, a massive kind of market. Um, so the import, export, the logistics, um, the clothing and manufacturing, a, a lot of the, the factories within the Pearl River Delta um, was actually owned by Hong Kong business um, people. So a lot of the kind of developments are, are, you know, has already been taking place in the past few decades. And now we're starting to see that being reflected in the type of startups as well. So we're seeing logistics tech happening quite a bit. We're seeing, you know, all these like SaaS models that try to um, help and support manufacturers, for example. You know, the AI and robotics is something we're also starting to see as well. So, you know, there is a lot more to Hong Kong than just being a financial center, but it is a case of just having to get out there and telling people a little bit more about that. And how do you see the link into the, the Greater Bay Area or the Pearl River Delta? Because you mentioned earlier the, the manufacturers, mm, you know, mm. they all had, they started here, they moved their factories <laughs> yeah, over there. Yeah. Now they move them to Cambodia and Vietnam. And right, places. right. So how do you see us plugging in or on, on a, more on a kind of global stepping stone? How, how do we play a role within that? So the, hot, the, the Greater Bay Area, which is, you know, nine cities within the Guangdong province, as well as Hong Kong and uh, Macau, is, see, is being seen as a massive business opportunity, actually not just for people within Hong Kong, but on the international level. A lot of people are very interested in that, not least because we're talking about you know this area having a population of, of 70 million people yeah. and a GDP of something like 1.3 trillion, which is actually the like same size as Spain. Economy, right? It's bigger than Spain, for example. Yeah. So it's actually, and within a relatively small area, there's huge business opportunities. Now, Hong Kong's role as a financial center is always going to be you know, play a very important part within that. I think, um, you know, with Hong Kong as a special administrative region, it allows us a level of autonomy that maybe it's not available in other kind of cities within um, within China. And certainly with something like, uh, uh, you know, somewhere like Shenzhen, which is becoming this massive powerhouse of real innovation and tech, um, I think it's, you know, Hong Kong has got a very natural position to try and support some of that because whilst R&D, the talent and, and maybe the, the market access is there, you know, you still have to go through a level of internationalization and Hong Kong is great for that. The fact that we're a free port, we have you know, freedom of movement for people, for um, for currency. And the borders are becoming almost, almost permeous, yeah, right? Exactly. So let's, let's uh, move on to the two things that you want to promote, mm. right? Uh, let's do your first plug. What would you like to promote? <laughs> well, you know, I am head of Start Me Up HK, and one of the things that we do do on a yearly basis is a Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival. It's going to run from the 10th to the 15th in February, and it's going to be a whole week long of really good startup events that's been organised by Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund. We've got KPMG involved. We've got W Hub. It's going to be a great week. If you're trying to and this is the fifth one, the fourth one. This is one? the fifth one. The fifth yeah, one. Congratulations. Fifth anniversary. Yeah. So for our first one, we had Elon Musk. For our fifth one, I'm going to hold off until hold okay, off. You, yeah, you guys come. You guys come. And uh, you, what's the domain you. name? The domain name is actually www.startmeup.hk. .hk. Great. That's where you get all the info. Second plug. Second plug is I live on the island. I live on Lama Island. I've lived there for about, you know, the past sort of like 16, 17 years. And uh, in a place like Hong Kong, where it's, you know, it's fantastic, but it's really full on, it's really hectic. You know, getting a, be able to get on a ferry and then getting off in a fishing village about half an hour away and suddenly I have this peace and quiet. I have my garden, I have my heights, I have the beaches. It's a great place to live. So, you know, if you're here visiting, go and check out the islands. If you live here, check out the islands also. Be careful, you're going to get inundated. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Actually, maybe. I, actually, my, my, my like, neighbours are probably not going to thank me, actually. All right, thank you very much, Jane. See you in February. Yeah.